Ah, oh, hey AD, what's up? It's Troy Savan. This is my house in Melbourne. Please, please come inside, make yourselves at home. I have been waiting for this day for my entire life, so. Yeah, I have been living in America for the last like, maybe like five or six years. And I have been so homesick the entire time. And then when everything got crazy in March, I came back to Australia to be with my family. And eventually I was just like, wait, what am I doing? I am so unbelievably happy here. And I just feel so at home that I wanted to put down roots. And I found this house and I was just like, done. Okay, first things first, this is like literally the most comfortable couch in the world. I feel like they, oh, people are gonna get mad at me for not taking off my shoes. They advertise it as the most comfortable couch in the world and it's accurate. It's by this company called Maker & Son. Fallen asleep here a good, a good few nights. This coffee table we had made, it's just a really, really huge log, basically. I hope they didn't cut down just specifically for me. I should have done some, some research. One of my favorite art pieces in the whole house. This is my Ramesh sculpture. The artist Ramesh just is so sick and eccentric and she also has a huge penis. These Akari lamps are my favorite. I think the goal was to have like a soup of light. You know what I mean? I didn't want like hard overhead lighting because no one looks good in that. Just finding soft light just kind of gently fills the room. And we kind of followed suit with these pendants. They're vintage. And I feel like they kind of look like alien skin or something. They sort of feel like what I imagine alien skin would feel like. And I love them. They glow at night. You guys should have come at night in all honesty because the house with all the lamps and stuff, it just feels super, super cozy. Um, this couch is vintage by Percival Lefer. It reminded me of a spaceship or something. If you come around the back, you can see there's like this white bathtub situation. I do always have a cut up apple tree in my house that wasn't just for the AD shoot, you know, just sometimes you want the branch as well, for whatever reason. This little moment, this is my reading nook or whatever, and it's super, super comfortable. So I sit here a lot, have my coffee. My wish for everyone is that your space is like the place that you think of when you meditate by using lamps or candles or just like your favorite bed sheets. I, I want that for everyone because it's a really, really nice feeling to just have a place that's like yours and you know, you can just kind of kick back and relax and enjoy your life. That's what it's all about. <laughs> I'm gonna say this a lot, but I think it's my favorite part of the house. It just feels really, really chill. We've got this like awesome green stone. Look at this table thing. This is a servery. I think it's the technique is called end block, where like each of these pieces is a separate piece of wood that they stick together and then they cut it and you get this like finish or whatever. And apparently it's food safe. So like you could eat your dinner off of it, but I, I use plates most of the time. One of my favorite things about the kitchen is this situation. Sometimes I stand here and like serve coffees or whatever to people if they're in the garden. All the appliances are integrated, which is sick. I'm not gonna show you my fridge because it's mostly just like beer and old takeout food. The materiality in the kitchen is I think my favorite in the house. We've got like all this black steel and I love the way that it shows, I don't even know, these like sort of natural markings and then just wood, heaps and heaps and heaps of wood, because I love wood. So we did a really, really big renovation on this house. The kitchen's all totally brand new, but weirdly, there used to be a toilet here. It was still like the kitchen, kind of grossed me out. Um, and so we, we got rid of it, and I'm gonna show you where we put it, because I think it's kind of sick. Let's go upstairs. Oh, come here, I wanna show you the ghost. So if you look up here, We've got two art pieces. Here's a little ghost by this artist named Nell. It's sand-blown glass. I just think it's so cute. Kind of reminds me of my dog back in LA, which I've unfortunately haven't seen for like a couple months now. Feels like a little bit of Nash in my house, which is nice. And this is by an artist called Sydney Ball. And there's another one outside, which I'm gonna show you soon. Come upstairs. So here we are on the landing. This is one of my favorite places in the house to come and look. 
It's kind of lofty and reminds me of some places that I've been to in like Williamsburg. There's so many places to sit in the house. Like you can be sitting up here, talking to someone down there with no worries, or you could be working at my desk. Just heaps and heaps of books. Not a lot of people know this about me, but I am very, very gay. And so just in case people don't know that, I litter gay homoerotic books all around the house. Sorry, don't look. I got this book, Jack Pearson, one of my favorite photographers. I shot with him a couple years ago and it's just so, so, so sick. Oh, look at this one. I got this two days ago, Hotels of Pyongyang. Super, super, super interesting. Kind of like finding beauty in everything, you know? A lot of this is photography and a lot of the photography I've realized that I'm most interested in is like documentarian style, like sort of voyeuristic where um, it's not necessarily like a set up photograph or whatever you really do feel like you're getting a peep into someone's life for just like that, you know, quick second. So this is the guest bedroom. Another huge Akari lamp, which I love. And then also the whole house opens up onto a park on this side. And so I just like the idea that if you open up this window, you get to hear the birds and stuff in the morning and Australian birds just sound insane. So these cork ceilings were original to the house. It kind of makes the whole house feel kind of like a, a really cozy cave. And we did the walls in this like Venetian plaster, which is so smooth and soft. And so I feel like everything just kind of like hugs you at night. I really do mean it this time. I think this is my favorite room in the house my sister's bathroom. Just like the colors and everything, it, it kills me, it really does. Like Flack Studio, who I worked with, did the most unbelievable job. I'm just like obsessed with all this detailing and everything and there's a massive skylight above my head as well, which is sick. That's in so much natural light. Sometimes I'll just come into this bathroom, even though it's not my bathroom, just to kind of like watch how the light changes throughout the day, because it's really, really nice. This is my sister's room. Sage, super cozy, super comfy. She's got this little balcony out here, another little Akari lamp to be able to live with her, give her like a, a pretty room that she loves and that she can like make her own has been so, so, so nice. My bedroom is upstairs and it's the only thing that's upstairs. And I love that like, I can just go up to my room and close the door. And it's like, no one even knows that I'm here. Come upstairs and I'll show you my bedroom. So this is my bedroom. This is my little sanctuary. It's really, really quiet. This opens up to the park and all of these windows open up. And then when it's like a really pretty day, I don't know. I just feel like I'm outside. It's beautiful. You get a breeze, you hear the birds and it's just really, really peaceful. I spend a lot of time up here. I chill in this chair a lot, which I didn't actually think I did. I just liked the chair. Cause I feel like if 80 is gonna come to your house, you have to have a furry chair. It's like a rule or something. I actually use it all the time. I read a lot in this chair. Sometimes if I'm feeling lazy, I'll roll out of bed and then do a Zoom meeting like here. These lamps are one of my favorite things in the house. And we did these amazing like burgundy carpets and at night they light up and there's kind of this like red glow in my room. It's like a really nice warm hug. My closet used to be here. So there was a, a closet here. We closed it off because I needed a bathtub. This is my bathroom. This is my bath. This is where I spend most of my time in this house. Sometimes I put like my laptop up here, watch Netflix. Yeah, it's really, really peaceful. There's just like music everywhere. And so I'll put on a nice album, have a bubble bath. This is my actual, actual favorite part of the house. I think this is the reason why I fell in love with it in the first place. You can fold away these doors and then there's this courtyard that's just like actual heaven to me. Again, you can see like the LA, California influence, but then we've also got like a lot of Japanese stuff. This is called the Swamp Cypress. There's little fishies in here somewhere. I don't know if you can see them. And then we've got like native Australian, like doesn't get much more Australian than this. 
or like the big eucalyptus tree. It's just like paradise for me. I spend a lot of time out here watering the garden, looking after the plants. So because we took the toilet out of the kitchen, we needed another toilet downstairs. And so I was like, what if we create this like fantasy, to like outdoor toilet situation? So this used to be a wine cellar and now it's this. I went in one of those bathrooms where, you know when you go to a restaurant and people are like, oh, have you been to the toilet? You have to go to the toilet. Just kind of lent into the fantasy and lent into like a little bit of surrealism. The walls are all curved, so it's kind of like a cave. I think the color is called ox blood. Yeah, I'm just obsessed with it. It smells really good. The Sonos is tucked away. Sometimes I make it feel like a rave in here, like if it's all quiet in the house or whatever, and you come in and it's like doo -doo 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 while you're peeing. Obsessed. I think it's so dramatic and extra, and I love it. One more thing I wanna show you. I'm getting my phone so that I don't this up. Basically the history of this house was in 1874, this was a handball court. How long ago was 1874? 146 years ago. So 146 years ago, this was a handball court. And then it was turned into a brick factory throughout all of the multiple renovations that this place has been through. One thing remained. If you look really close, you can see two handsome men playing handball in a court and then there's this like weird sort of spear thing on the side. And then you walk over here and it's the same buddy spear. I really love the idea that this house has had so many lives and been through kind of just so much and seen so much. I'm only 25 and this house is like 146 years old. So I'm really, really, really proud and super, super, super grateful to be able to live here and call it home. I'm super, super grateful that you guys came over because this is like a really big dream of mine. Thanks again for coming AD. I hope you had fun, I had a lot of fun, but please leave now because we're about to go into another COVID lockdown and I need to get my affairs in order. Thanks for coming. Bye, stay safe. Love you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.